The MSCI World Index is one of the major stock market indices in the world and arguably the most popular index among passive investors. It is a widely recognized benchmark for global stock markets encompassing stocks from 23 different developed countries. However, despite its popularity and widespread use, there are several misconceptions surrounding the MSCI index that can lead to misunderstanding its purpose and significance. So in this video, we will explore some of these misconceptions five in total and provide clarity on what the MSCI World Index actually is, how it works and what its limitations are. So whether you are an experienced investor or simply interested in learning more about global equity markets, this video will provide some very valuable insights into the MSCI World Index and its role in the world of finance. First off, let me get one thing straight. I think the vast majority of people should simply invest passively and invest in one, two or three broad and low cost indices. And I think the MSCI world is a really good choice for this. If you are completely new to investing, investing in a passive ETF is also an excellent choice to get a sense of what it's actually like to be invested in the equity markets. How it feels like when the value of your investments goes up and down and to develop an interest in the broader economy and yeah, more generally economic topics. However, I think especially among the group of passive investors, there are a lot of misconceptions about the MSCI World Index. So let me inform you about some of the limitations of this popular ETF so that you can make more informed decisions when it comes to choosing the appropriate investing strategy and goals that suit your personal situation. So the first one is the idea that the MSCI world carries no risk, which is simply not true. What you have to understand is that the passive investing industry is now a trillion dollar industry. And obviously this industry will make lots of promises to attract even more money, but these promises may not necessarily be true. The MSCI world is certainly not a magical investment instrument that will magically always go up. Now, in fact, it's not uncommon for the index to decline in any given year, as highlighted by these two curvo charts. Now, take a guess. What do you think? How long lasted the longest drawdown of the MSCI World Index? I'm pretty sure you will be surprised by the length of this flat return period. So let me show you. Well, the longest drawdown period lasted for 13 years and two months and was between August 2000 and October 2013. And the maximum drawdown from peak to trough in this period was actually a negative 54%. This chart here attempts to answer how long you should stay invested to have a high probability of achieving a positive return. For different period length, it calculates how many periods of that length have resulted in a positive return. And as you can see, you only cross the 90% threshold if you extend your investing horizon to 10 years or more. So to sum up this first point, please understand that the MSCI World Index is not immune to market fluctuations. Like all investments, the MSCI World Index is subject to volatility. And while the index has historically delivered very decent long-term returns, it is still subject to short-term ups and downs, and it's important to mentally prepare for this. Okay, the second limitation of the MSCI World Index is a little more nuanced. From my experience of talking to people who invest regularly in ETFs. I can say that investing in a broad market index or multiple ETFs even makes many people feel comfortable and I would argue sometimes too comfortable. Take my fiance for instance. Three years ago or so she set up an ETF savings plan and now invests 300 euros a month into the MSCI World Index. I think that's actually a great start but considering her monthly income 300 euros in my opinion is not really that impressive when speaking of savings rates. So as I said, I feel like most people are getting too comfortable once they've set up one or two ETF savings plans. They tell themselves that they are now doing something for their retirement, but then they just stop. They stop educating themselves and they never consider investing more money, larger and more significant sums of money that will actually get them closer to reaching financial freedom. And quite frankly, as they are not educating themselves, not truly really understanding what they actually invest in, how the stock market works and so on and so forth, they would also never feel comfortable actually putting $100,000 or more into the stock market. And this brings us to my third problem with the MSCI World Index. The idea that the MSCI World Index is an appropriate index for all investors. Another promise of the ETF industry is that you simply have to invest for 30 years and you will become rich. But as we've just shown, 
first, the MSCI world does not always go up and will actually experience multi-year flat return periods too. And second of all, investing just 50 or $100 a month will not lead to financial freedom. Sorry, but I have to tell you that. Of course, investing $100 a month for 30 years straight will multiply your wealth. After 30 years, your net worth will have grown to $149,000 US dollars. And that's obviously great, but I have to break it to you. 150 grand will not allow you to live a financially free life, especially when you start taking into account inflation. So you only get financially free if you actually work very hard, invest a lot of money regularly over the long term, try to increase your income and possibly achieve a return greater than 8% annually. Fourthly, there is no such thing as passive investing. In fact, all investing requires active decisions. This is something that I have addressed in a previous video of mine titled The Big Index and ETF Lie. So first of all, many ETFs are actually anything but passive and I think the average investor is not really aware of this. There are a lot of very active portfolio management decisions involved in most ETFs and certain stocks may be added to or deleted from an index on a regular basis. On top of this, by investing in the MSCI World Index, you yourself also make a very active decision. You make the decision to get exposure to A, the developed markets and especially the United States. As contrary to popular belief, the MSCI World Index does not give you exposure to global equity markets and all countries around the world. Now, in fact, close to 68% of the index is made up of US listed companies. And B, you get a lot of exposure to large cap stocks. Just look at the current top 10 constituents of the MSCI World Index that represent 18% of the index. They are all companies with a market capitalization well north of 100 billion US dollars. So you cannot really say that investing in the MSCI World Index guarantees absolute diversification. Now, investing in the MSCI World does provide some level of diversification, but it does not guarantee it. As seen, the index is heavily weighted towards the largest companies in the United States. Lastly, with over 1,500 large and mid-cap companies from 23 different developed countries. The index may be a great choice from a diversification point of view, but it may also result in an unintended exposure to lower quality businesses. If you've watched my recent video titled The One Thing Most People Get Wrong About Stocks, you will know that the returns of the individual components of a broad stock market index are positively skewed, meaning that only a select few stocks actually contribute meaningfully to the total return of the index. As Hendrik Bessenbinder highlighted in his paper, do stocks outperform treasury bills? Quote unquote, the best performing 4% of listed companies explain the net gain of the entire US stock market since 1926. So what I love about investing actively is that it gives me control over which companies I actually invest in. I only want to invest in businesses earning high returns on capital with healthy balance sheets so that they can self-fund the operations, businesses with a long runway for growth and with excellent capital allocators at the helmet of the corporation. Now combine this with above average revenue growth, operating leverage and a modest starting valuation and you get excellent ingredients for an outperforming stock. Of course, you can also run a dual strategy. Depending on your goals, invest a certain percentage of your net worth passively in ETFs like the MSCI World Index and then devote the other part of your portfolio and net worth to individual stocks with sound and strong fundamentals. Okay, I'm sure you would love to learn more about the positively skewed distribution of stock returns, which I just mentioned very briefly. I think understanding this is essential for both active and passive investors. So make sure to watch the following video next. Take care.